very talented footballer. He keeps putting his hand up and his form continues, so then he, he continues to be in the mix for us. As a young kid, I was a massive Collingwood fan. Uh, me, mum were, were big uh, Pies supporters. Yeah, so this is some of my uh, Collingwood stuff I had when I was a kid. Um, the long sleeve Collingwood jumper, this is one of them. Um, got the long sleeve because I, I was kicking stuff, used to get a bit cold. So I used to go to the football fair bit with mum. Used to play in the backyard football and pretending I was Nathan Buckley and Anthony Rocker. And Buckley, number five, and I remember getting his signature there. Remember a few other, the other players asked to sign and I said kind of just let that one go with his number so that was the one I always had. Just admired him and being the captain of Collingwood and seeing him play, yeah he was just my favourite player along with probably he was my main one, Anthony Rocker was my second one. I look at kids now and how you know how amazed they are when they see guys like Dane Swan and Scott Penderbury. That's exactly how I was when I was you know young. I've walked past Nathan Buckley getting his autograph and Tarkin Lockyer and and those sort of players, it was amazing, you know. I can't even describe the feeling it was when I was young. I was part of the Buckley Brigade, one of the years at 2002, so. Mum used to take me down to Vic Park and used to do like the family days, all the players used to be there. The room was just packed with Collingwood, so. Yeah, here it is, all the stuff, and as a young Collingwood supporter. Selection 25, Brisbane Lions. 2010, yeah, I was drafted to Brisbane at pick 25. Patrick Carnesis, Oakley Chargers, fourth on six. We're just watching it together, me, mum and dad and my brother, and pick 25 got caught out Brisbane, and I remember dad jumped up and my brother jumped up, and then mum burst into tears, you know, obviously leaving home, going into state, so it was a bit of mixed emotions there. It's a dream come true for every kid to, to play sport at, at the highest level. But going to Brisbane, uh, as exciting as it was, it was also daunting. The main thing was, for me was struggling to be away from home and day to day just, you know, playing football and training and then coming home, not being able to see mum, dad, my brother, even my grandparents, my cousins, that was the main thing for me. And I kind of felt when I had, you know, had that burden thinking about that all the time, well, I wasn't playing at my best football. That's why the three years were in and out of the team and just struggling to find a bit of consistency. Family is the most important thing to us. Family is everything. Um, if you have family, then you have everything else around you. And I know in Pat's situation, he struggled in regards to missing family, uh, missing his grandparents. And one of his grandmothers was quite ill with MS for, for many, many years. And Pat frequently used to go there and sit with her and, and spend time with her. And unfortunately, she passed away last year and he wasn't here to, to mourn or to mourn properly for her. They're things that, uh, that he had to struggle whilst he was up there. Some people probably see that as a sign of weakness. We don't, we see it as strength. Where we come from, we all stick together and families should be together. Being Greek and having a European background, we see that as strength and power. Obviously, at the end of the season, there's a period of time where you wait for the trade, so I'd spoken to Derek Hine a fair few times throughout that year. Obviously, I um, told Brisbane that I wanted to come back home, so that was the opportunity for now to kind of explore, and there were a few clubs circling around, and obviously it was Victorian clubs, so the opportunity to talk to clubs, and then Derek Hine, we've spoken a fair few times, and I think it got to a point where I kind of made my decision pretty quick, and you know, him saying that we want you to come to Collingwood was was an easy decision for me straight away. We had a couple other clubs come towards late end of the trade. I was waiting for two weeks, I think, and then to the last day, and I kind of remember speaking to Dad in that period, thinking, what about if it doesn't happen? What about if I don't get picked up by a club? Amongst all the confusion, I sat down with Pat and we spoke, and, and I basically said to him, you've got to go with, with, with who your first love is. Who's the one that showed you love? And that was Collingwood. There was a degree of interest from a few clubs. You know, he's a kind of supporter from a long way back, and um, you know, fortunately enough, we were, were able to present an opportunity for him and um, and explain, you know, how he was potentially going to become a long-term player. Because this is not about just bringing uh, Paddy in and, and having him here for a season and, and, and then moving him out. You know, he's only a 21-year-old lad, and so we see him as a long-term player at the football club. I respected the way Derek followed Pat's career 
And for me, that was the most important thing. And as a father, that was my advice that I gave to Pat. Go with the one that shows you the love. And that was Collingwood. It's pretty much a dream come true to come play for the team that you barrack for and it doesn't happen to, to many. We're absolutely stoked that he's back now and uh, we're excited about the next challenge for him. Coming to Collingwood was, was what I wanted, a dream come true, but now I kind of looked at it as a second opportunity. Now I'm here to you know, take it to the next step and I want to you know, grab that opportunity. And I remember speaking with Derek Hine. He said all the, all the resources are there, the facilities are there, everything's there for me now, so I kind of got to grab, and that's how I've kind of been looking at it. My short-term goals and even speaking to some of the coaches that I chat regularly with is just to get match fit and just enjoy my football for now, for the next month or two. You know, I'm in a new team as well. I think people forget that I've come to a new team, new structures, you know, getting to know the boys, play with guys I've never played with as well. So I can't kind of expect just to come in and just set myself straight in, as well as missing the whole pre-season and missing a long period of time. But for me, it's just getting fit, keep playing some consistent football, play it to a point where I feel that I'm ready to go and see where that takes me. Watching them play, kind of just, you know, you get to a point where you kind of look a bit look a bit further and how much you want to get out there, but, you know, just keep doing the things you, I'm doing and hopefully very soon it happens. You ready? Yeah, we'll head off. Grab your car when I'll drive. Okay, you drive. Today we're off to uh, Vic Park up against Bendigo, and I think a lot of the boys are excited and ready to go. It's perfect weather, perfect day for it, so I can't wait. So obviously coming back home last year, I was in Brisbane. I had groin problems, a bit of OP, and missed the whole pre-season and a slow start to the year. And the main thing was just getting it right and feeling 100% before I started training, before I started playing, and the medical staff looked after me pretty well. And yeah, now I'm here and I've had about uh, three games I've played, a half game, two full games, my third one today. So it's a bit frustrating, but we finally got there. My first game when I played at Vic Park against Coburg, I had a fair bit of family down and um, everyone was pretty excited just to see me get out there and have a run around. Um, Dad and mum always come down, brother, and all my cousins and grandparents and stuff like that. So yeah, everyone kind of shows their support. The thing I feel with Colin, you know, even though we're going so well, everyone just wants to keep improving and everyone, you know, doesn't want to stop there and kind of give each other a pat on the back. They just want to keep going and keep going. And that's how professional it is. And the boys, just that winning culture in terms of just keep improving and aim for more and aim for more and just kind of set standards on each other. And, and that's what's happening, you know, and that's how good the guys are playing at the moment. And just that competitive nature inside as well. As you see, there's a lot of senior guys who've been playing VFL because a lot of the younger boys are stepping up. So that competitiveness and, you know, able to keep pushing is really good and really important. So Paddy Cardenas is today working out of the square predominantly. Looking pretty strong to be honest. He's providing a, a very tall, mobile target for this Collins Reserve side. He's taking his grabs first go. Since had the ball here, we had Paddy K. Would have got that message. Yeah. Reckon you were here and you've done a real, you've done a lot of good work in that four six. <laughs> you were here. It has to be you to start working across Timmy Allen. It's got to be you. That's that's your role today, and that's going to be demanding for both of you. All right, but that's what we need from. So we just finished the game, won by about 115 points. Um, it was a really good win by the boys, especially after the bye, coming off against Williamstown, not finishing the way we wanted to. From the first bounce to the last bounce, even though we were consistently kicking goals and were up by a fair bit, the boys just managed to keep doing the things that we've been told. It was really good to finish off. You know, speaking with Fly during the week, my work, rate, work rate's a big thing for me and getting my fitness up, so I tried from the first bounce just to get that going. Um, finished off luckily with three goals and my execution, that's something I've got to work on as well. I'll be working that, on that during the week, but 
Um, yeah, the main focus for me was from the first bounce right to the end. Even though we were winning and we were up by a fair bit, just to keep running and keep chasing and pressing. I felt like I did that towards the end, but I just, the more importantly, I felt better. And this is my third full game, and um, I'm feeling really good at the moment. I'm pulling up really well. He's progressing really well. It's his fourth game back. He's played four games in five weeks. Um, you know, he's, he's kicked goals in, in every game bar the um, Williamstown game. I still think he's got a little bit to go in terms of getting his conditioning and getting his tank up to where it needs to be, but yeah, you can only do what he's doing and he's given that he's missed a big chunk of the summer and been isolated from the main group with his, with his body. Um, I think he's progressing really well. The back end of the season, I think he's going to be a really damaging sort of player at either level, whether he's playing VFL footy or he gets his opportunity at AFL level. Like, and he's shown at AFL level you know, at Brisbane that he's more than capable. Outside of the club, I think the connection you build off the field with players always is going to help your connection on the field because you know you have that trust and you know what it, it's like predictability, I suppose. You know what each other is going to do. Um, and with Langers, I think we have a fair bit in common and the age thing as well. Very, very similar in age, so I think you know outside of the club when we catch up or whatever, it's it's really good to build that connection and keep building on it. Um, and I think that definitely transfers onto the game. Yeah, Frosty's obviously played a similar amount of games than me. He's two years older, I think, but um, we've got similar personality. Where we're both pretty laid back, so I quite quite enjoy warming up with him before the game because you know we're not too intense and we don't um, get caught up in in the crowds and stuff like that, which some players might. Going through exactly the same thing, pretty much. It's, I think it's really helped me. Um, don't know if it's helped him, but <laughs> um, it's just. Sharing the same experiences and like before the games where you kick together and both very kind of relaxed people and I think that that helps us both a lot going into the games. We don't think about it too much, we don't get overexcited or overly nervous or anything. Um, so I think it's been really helpful, yeah. I guess that mix of old experience defenders like Maxi and, and Toos and Brownie and stuff like that with, with the new because they definitely drive the leadership down there and they're developing us, us pretty well and they're definitely telling us you know, where to go and the, and the spots we need to be. Yeah, heading into each week, I still pinch myself. It's still really surreal to me. Uh, you see the names that you're playing against and it's just unbelievable that from where I've come to where I am now, it seems like it's happened so fast. And seeing those names that I'll be playing against is just unreal. I'm definitely surprised about how quickly I've settled into the team as such, but um, yeah, I guess it's been through a lot of hard work and a lot of, uh, you know, little, little things that I've been fixing, you know, with the coaches and stuff like that. So um, it's definitely been surprising and I'm, and I'm thankful to the, for the coaches for giving me um, such a great opportunity and, and sticking with me for, for a few weeks when I was probably not performing to a satisfactory level. So, um, no, nah, it's, been, it's been good so far and I'm just hoping to keep performing consistently. I suppose playing against someone like Buddy Franklin, I think it was in... Fourth, fourth or fifth game, maybe. Um, it was very daunting, but you can't let it affect you too much. And each week we do research on the opposition. Uh, so I just did that as per normal. Um, knew, I've obviously seen him play a lot, so knew what, was, what to expect, I suppose. But there's so, there's so much you can know before you go into the game and then you have to try and carry it out. So that was, um, and he's very tough to play on. Oh, yep, that's him. <laughs> Siren. So the Crows, a big turnaround in form. They stopped Collingwood's winning run and after losing to the Demons, having their 10 day break, they win by 22 points. Adelaide 10 16 76, Collingwood 7 12 54 in front of 50,000 here at the Adelaide Oval. We'll be priority tonight is to, um, is to obviously get them fed um, and get a good night's sleep. Um, We'll do a water-based recovery session in the morning and then head back to the club and probably spend a good hour, hour and a half tomorrow afternoon back at the club just laying down the foundations for returning for next week. So again, that'll be a water-based, treatment-based recovery session tomorrow afternoon. We'll go forward to the water at 8.30, 15 minutes. Go here at 8.45, just for the water at the pool. Go back to 9 o'clock. 
Yeah, look, it's just general, generic stretching. I mean, you know, and, and the priority is food. Just getting that in so we can start the recovery process for next week. And, and look, I'm a big believer in sleep. Uh, three things I look at are food, sleep, and movement. So they'll be the three priorities over the next 24 hours. We've got an hour of recovery for Look, it gives us a chance to get some quality training in early in the week. Uh, that's it's always a, a bonus when you get a longer break. You know, you can get some you can get some extra volume, and extra intensity in the training. So, look, I think after a, a loss like tonight, we'll, we'll want to hit the track pretty early next week. So that'll be a Monday, Tuesday process, then day off Wednesday, and then back to our normal return leading into the West Coast, which will be Thursday and Friday. Great day, Kurt. Injury footing, just touch base with the docks. Forwards eight thirty, mids eight forty-five, backs five o'clock. That's the reality of the business. You've got to get yourself back up and go again. And, and they're professionals, and you know, our expectation is that they'll learn from tonight, and they'll be very disappointed. Um, I think we're all disappointed, but I think the reality is you've got to get back on the horse, and, and the aim is to get that moving starting tonight, start the process, and you know, get back on it and be ready again for next Saturday afternoon. Uh, so it's the, the day after the game, um, just lost to Adelaide, so we're back in the pool here. I'll walk some laps, you know, 10 minutes, just kind of get them, get the body going, and jump on the plane and. Heading back to Melbourne and doing some more back at Westmount Centre. So this is the first stage and we'll do the rest this afternoon. Yes, it's important just to, to get the body going um, as soon as you can. So come Monday we'll, we'll start training and, and prepare for the, the next week. So this is flushing out the legs, get, get rid of that lactic acid build up from last night and you know, try to get your legs a little bit fresher. Get $550 cash back on any new Holden exclusive to Collingwood members. See your local Holden dealer for full details. The Collingwood Football Club is very excited to launch the Get One campaign. We'd like every Collingwood member to go out there and recruit at least one of their mates. For every one of your mates you do recruit, you'll go in the running to win this Collingwood corporate box at the MCG for the Round 21 clash against the Brisbane Lions. For more information on the Just Get One campaign and competition details, log on to membership.collingwoodfc.com.au or call 1300 Magpie. For every one of your mates you sign up, you'll increase your chances at winning this fully catered box for the Round 21 Clash. And with membership packages starting at as little as $55, you'll help grow the Collingwood Army and hopefully you'll be the one sitting here with your mates enjoying this once in a lifetime opportunity. Go Pies. Yeah, 1990 was, uh, I was still team manager at that stage and uh, part of my role at the club was uh, uh, to make sure everything uh, worked uh, correctly the way it should do on match day and also part of my role was to take uh, a lot of Lee Matthews' messages because we only had the one runner in those times and so I used to take a lot of his message and relay him to the runner. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that was my main function. We'd had a pretty good year actually. We, we hadn't lost a game at Victoria Park at all and uh, we went to the finals fairly confident. We'd had 16 wins and six losses. Uh, so we actually played West Coast Eagles uh, in a qualifying final out at Waverley. As it turned out, uh, it was a draw. And it was a, a pretty exciting draw too, because uh, halfway through the, the uh, last quarter, we were uh, actually 10 points down. Directly in front, Sumit strikes it. It's a goal, the Eagles in front. There was 50 metres out. The city end goal at BFL Park. That might be there. And Brian Taylor, who had one of his rare quiet days, had been taken from the field in the third quarter. And uh, through the, the, the phone, we didn't have headphones in those days, we just had a telephone and I could hear Lee debating in the box whether we put Brian Taylor back on uh, to give him the opportunity to kick a couple of goals, which we badly needed. From the pocket, but directly in front now, should goal and does, four points the difference. Pitch, Francis pops it in, in front, oh. Taylor was in the field with Shawley. Yes. Free kick there, over the shoulder against Murray Rance. So we've got the unlikely hero, Brian Taylor, kicks and kicks truly. 
so things were looking okay then and then all of a sudden Peter Dacos bobbed up again, he kicked four goals that particular day and done one of his check side uh, uh, passes, uh, sorry left foot ki uh, check side kicks which he'd done a number of times that year and as it turned out, out for us fortunately it went straight through the centre of the goals. Ronnie McEwen was playing on Peter Sumich, who had also kicked uh, four goals up until that stage, and uh, he fortunately uh, he out bustled uh, Ronnie McEwen and took a mark. And uh, we didn't realise how close it was at the time. We didn't find out till later on that there was only uh, about 16 seconds to go. Well, it's just a question of accuracy now for Peter Sumich. Clock ticking down. He's in the wrong pocket. This could be a kick after the siren top. He was no more than five metres from the line of the 10-yard square. And by the time he went back, he's about 15 metres from goal and probably about a 45-degree angle. And after kicking four goals that day, and he was generally a pretty accurate kick for goal, I must admit I started to get a bit concerned. I was nearly ready to start crying again because we hadn't won a finals game in six years leading up to that qualifying final. And I just couldn't believe we were going to lose another one. As it turned out, fortunately for us, he, uh, he did kick it behind, which, uh, which levelled the scores, which meant we all had to go back and go through the same process again the following week, which of course we, we duly won, won by about 10 goals. One thing I've learned is that when the siren goes, whatever the result is, you can be stiff you've won or stiff you've lost or whatever the case may be. Simple facts of life today were that we drew the bloody game. And we came over here to win. Uh, so the result turned out very good for us that, uh, and uh, of course we won and everyone knows we went on to play the grand final that year. Tony Shaw, he's seen his brother play and lose grand finals and now he is the champion. It was really an exciting time at the club, uh, the fact that after we the qualifying gives us the opportunity to play in a, another grand final. I love being a member of the Magpie Army. Because I'm part of one of the biggest sporting clubs in the world. I love sharing my dreams. With over a million others that bleed black and white like me. And it's in my blood. This jumper makes me feel 10 feet tall. A packed MCG every week. Collingwood domination, envy of the nation.